I've been looking at the Tesla reservation tracker on and off every couple of weeks for the last year or so. And I noticed something interesting that I never noticed before. 73.8% of all pre-orders, 1.2, well, 1.19 million pre-orders that Tesla has for the Cybertruck, 73.8% have ordered full self-driving. So 74%. Of buyers of 1.2 million pre-orders believe full self-driving will actually work and are willing to pay 10,000 US dollars to get it. Now, isn't that interesting? Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Now, if you're here because you don't like EVs, probably can't convert you because you're too stupid, you're too scared of the future, and this is not what we really hear about on this channel. This channel is all about what is going to happen over the next 10 years and whether you like it or not whether you are dragged kicking and screaming into the future evs renewable energy and green well not because of some sort of wacky left-wing craziness no green because it's logical is coming by 2030 it's over the whole market is going to be electric so really a lot of money is going to go from here to there you might as well put some of that in your pocket. And how can you do that? Well, one way you can do that is by learning what is actually going on, not what you think is going on, not what Toyota or Ford is telling you is going on, or BMW or Mercedes or whoever is telling you is going on, what you want to believe is going on, but what is actually going on. Now, how many people really thought that the entire phone market, Blackberries and Nokias, would be basically dead within two years? I think you'll find not many people did. That's why not many people made money out of Apple and wish they had of. So I've, been, I've made an interesting video lately about the Cybertruck. Obviously, I've pre-ordered one. I've also pre-ordered a BYD EA1 little hatchback, two different extreme opposites of the spectrum. But yep, they both have their purposes. So anyway, when I first started this channel, I made a few videos, and at the time I had almost no subscribers, about Tesla. And I talked about in a number of videos about how Tesla had 1 million pre orders for the Tesla Cybertruck. For some reason, to me, I couldn't understand why no one in the means, mainstream media, no one on any of the major websites, whether that be Tesla Radio or Electric.co or Inside EVs or anyone else, had spoken about the fact that Tesla had 1 million pre orders for the Cybertruck, which is obviously insane. And obviously, it's hugely beneficial for Tesla because it gives them a very good indication of what future demand would be and enables them to plan as well as they possibly can and obviously invest a huge amount of money into actually trying to fulfill some of that demand, which I think they will definitely really, really, really struggle with. Now, whether you're a Tesla fanboy or not, I hate that terminology because we don't call people who love Fords fanboys, do we? Do we call them Ford fanboys? There's a lot of Ford fanboys. There's a lot of Toyota fanboys. Here in Australia, every man and his dog is a Toyota fanboy, even though they don't produce vehicles that are particularly special or have anything like that's really interesting about them or really defining about them. They're not class leading anyway. So why, why don't we mock those guys as well for being fanboys of them? So let's just get, let's just cut out the fanboy talk. It's ridiculous. It's just a way to kind of make an us and them and hate on people. It's unnecessary. Guys, if there's comments on the channel that are saying Tesla fanboys this, I'm just going to probably delete them because it's just ridiculous. Let's just be, let's be adults. We don't need to talk like that. So. Anyway, getting back to Tesla, obviously it enables this, them to plan out how many Cybertrucks they need to build. Now, really interesting if you look at the Tesla Cybertruck tracker is that Tesla now has 1.2 million pre-orders. Now, when I first made started making that video, I think it was around about four months ago. And Tesla at the time, when I first started making it, had 850,000 pre-orders. By the time I finished it, it was a long video, took me a while. Other things were more important. Well, by the time I finished it, Tesla had over 1 million pre-orders. And now, a couple of months later, they have 1.2 million. So if you look at the actual tracker here, it's very interesting because you can see here on the 24th of June, so only a week ago, Tesla had 1.165 million pre-orders. They now have one point, almost 1.9 million. So it appears as though Tesla are getting about 20,000 pre-orders a week, which just seems insane. Even if those pre-orders dwindle down significantly, even if that number of pre-orders that Tesla are getting for the Cybertruck decreases to say half that, you're still looking at Tesla having potentially up to 2 million pre-orders by the middle of next year. 
Now, I don't believe Tesla will be making the Cybertruck this year. I believe it's not going to start until 2022. It's just such an enormous engineering challenge, which honestly, I think the only company in the world that could take on this kind of engineering challenge and really deliver this in mass production is Tesla. It's a crazy car. I absolutely love it, but it's an enormous engineering challenge. I think that Tesla's going to really struggle to deliver these vehicles, but I'm fully expecting that. I don't expect to get mine until maybe 2024. If I'm lucky, maybe 2025. But I pre-ordered, I think it was within maybe 48 hours. And I think I was a hundred thousandth pre-order. Now, what I find, what I found really interesting at the time that I made my pre-order is that my stock went down in value. So Tesla stock price actually decreased after Tesla released the Cybertruck. The thing is, Tesla didn't just release a, a vehicle and say, look at that. Doesn't that look weird? There you go. Stock price, down you go. Tesla actually said, we're going to deliver this vehicle. It's going to have all these spec specifications. It's clearly class leading. Nothing in the, in the world is priced. Look at it. I mean, 40,000 US dollars for a vehicle that's the size of Ford F-250. It's massive. But the thing is as well, remember the exterior dimensions are more similar in size to an F-150 because, right, it doesn't have that huge long bonnet. Very, very practical shape. So why did the stock price go down? I mean, it's insane, right? This is a sort of bizarre logic that somehow affects Tesla. I don't know. Anyhow, two days later, Musk tweeted that Tesla had received 146,000 pre-orders in the first 1.5 days after the unveiling. 146,000 in 1 1.5 days. Now, obviously, each pre-order requires only a 100 US dollar deposit, but I think people don't usually pre-order a product by paying 100 US dollars unless they're genuinely serious about buying something. Now, if you understand the principle of delayed gratification, often you'll find that by delaying gratification, it makes the actual end goal and the end objective so much more worthwhile. So what that means is if you have to wait, then often you value the product you eventually receive more. Sort of like when you train to achieve a goal. You train really hard for, say, six months to maybe do a marathon or do your first triathlon or do some kind of event that to you is meaningful. And then when you achieve that, all of that delayed gratification gives that end product much more meaning and value. And I can see that happening here with the Cybertruck for myself. For example, waiting three to four years, delaying gratification for that long, for me, I can see will have a lot of purpose and meaning. Now, hopefully the United States government won't still be trying to kill Tesla. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys out there that hate Tesla are saying that the governments are all propping them up. It's nonsense. They aren't. I mean, look at the logic of the situation, right? Right now, Tesla is selling cars at an incredible rate, increasing their sales every month, or at least every quarter, and they are supply constrained, clearly. Not order constrained, supply constrained. How can that be when the United States government is literally giving out seven and a half thousand US dollars to anyone who will buy a car, an EV in America, that isn't branded Tesla? I mean, this to me is staggering. Surely the United States government, the Biden administration, could just say, we're going to extend the credits to Tesla as well. We're going to change the cap from whatever it was, 400,000, 500,000. Make it, make it more. I don't understand why the Biden administration, I understand why the Trump administration didn't do much for Tesla. They were really kind of more interested in coal. It was crazy, right? But I don't understand why the Biden administration isn't helping Tesla. Maybe they don't think that Tesla doesn't need help, or maybe they really don't support EVs, or maybe they do get paid a lot of money from other interest groups in the fossil fuel industry. And I think that's more likely, to be honest. I think I'm concerned right now that the government, the United States government, isn't going to support their biggest car company, what will be, without a doubt, their biggest car company, potentially the biggest energy company on the planet by 2030. And obviously, if the United States government can support them, that will happen much, much quicker rather than supporting companies from Europe. They're supporting Volkswagen. They're supporting Japanese automate. Who, whoever sells cars, EVs in America is getting 7,500. doesn't matter what country they're from. But the one who started it all, the company that put their balls on the line, that made it all happen, that pu pulled everyone kicking and screaming into the future with them, is not getting this money. Right? This is a huge difference for a consumer. Massive difference, right? Massive. Imagine walking into a showroom. There's a car for $47,000. The Tesla costs $41,000. The $47,000 one from the other automaker is still cheaper than the Tesla. 
Now, obviously, right now, the strength of Tesla's product is meaning that this isn't affecting their sales, but it may eventually change. So please, if you're a fan of Tesla, or if you're a fan of just electric vehicles in general, and you're in the United States, write a letter to the Biden administration. I don't know, do something, start a petition. It needs to change. It's been a long time now, guys. It's time for them to change the scenario. They need to support the future. EVs are the future, and Tesla really love them or hate them. They've made this all happen. Without Musk coming along, without Tesla coming along and really pushing this, I mean, do you remember what EVs were called back in 2010? They were called golf carts, toys. Tesla made them cool. Whether you like that or not, they did. And they forced all these other automakers to make these cars. And now Tesla has 1.2 million pre-orders for the Cybertruck, probably 2 million by the time they're actually manufacturing them. That is a huge number, and that is the future. And we should support a company like this. No matter our feelings towards Elon Musk personally or towards something that someone said to you because they were pro-Tesla and they offended you, it's time to get over that. It's time to get over that and to move on. If you're a BYD fan, if you're a fan of Lee Auto or Neo or whoever you're a fan of, there's no need to call people Tesla fanboys. There's no need to criticize Tesla. How about we just support all of us together? Let's come together as an industry. There's no need for these channels on YouTube to just be so pro Tesla that they bash everything else, or to be so pro Ford that they bash everything else, or be so pro whatever it is, Chinese or anything, it doesn't matter. This is the future. EVs are the future. You can see it with these order numbers. 1.2 million pre-orders. This is has never happened in history. Now, guys, like I said before, something funny happened after those first few videos. No one was watching them. I only had 20 subscribers to the channel. And somehow, within a short period of time, that number increased. And right as it was accelerating really quickly and views to the channel started leaping up, mainstream media, Electric and Tesla Rati and other YouTube channels, all of a sudden started reporting the fact that Tesla had 1 million pre-orders. And I don't know if it was they saw it on my channel, but I feel like maybe they did. And that was kind of cool. And that made me want to make this channel work. It made me want to bring content to you guys that would change your lives potentially for the better, that would change the world for the better, that would help people to understand the fact that EVs are coming, renewable energy is coming, and the world is getting better every single day. We are moving towards a better world, a better planet every day. And there's nothing you can say, do, that will change that, but you can certainly help it go faster. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.